ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाया ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाया सो रीडिंग फ्रॉम कैंटो 5 आई एम सॉरी कैंटो 10 चैप्टर 5 चैप्टर्स एंटाइटल द मीटिंग ऑफ नंद महाराज एंड वासुदेवा दिस इज टेक्स्ट नंबर 29 श्रीनंद उवाच अहो थे देव अहो थे पुत्र कम सेना बहवो हत एक शिस्तवाद्राज खन्यसा दिव कथा श्रीनंद उवाच अहो थे देव की पुत्र कम सेना बहवो हत एक राजन्यसा दिव कथा श्रीनंद उवाच अहो थे देव की पुत्र कम सेना बहवो हत एक राजा कन्यासा दिव कथा Sri Nanda Uvacha and Nanda Maharaj said Aho alas te your Devaki putra all the sons of your wife Devaki Kamsena by Kim by King Kamsa Babaha many hataha having been killed eka one avasista 
remaining child, Avaraja, the youngest of all, Kanya, a daughter also, Saapi, she also, Divyagata, gone to the heavenly planets. So now Vasudeva has spoke, now he stops, now Nanda Maharaj responds. Nanda Maharaj said, Alas, King Kamsa killed so many of your children born of Devaki, and your one daughter, the youngest child of all, entered the heavenly planets. Purport. By his divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. <clears throat> When Vasudeva understood from Nanda Maharaj that the mystery of Krishna's birth and having been exchanged with Yasoda's daughter was yet undisclosed, he was happy that things were going on nicely. By saying that Vasudeva's daughter, his youngest child, had gone to the heavenly planets, Nanda Maharaj indicated that he did not know that this daughter was born of Yasoda and that Vasudeva had exchanged her with Krishna. Thus, the doubts of Vasudev were dispelled. End of purport. Om Agyan Timirandasya Gina Jena Salakaya Chaksu Unmelitam Yena Tasmai Sri Gurave Namaha Sri Chaitanya Manobistam Stapditam Yena Bhutale Swayam Bhupa Kadam Mayam Dadanti Satadanti Kam Bande ham shi guru shi yuta padekamalam shi gurun vaishnavam scha shi rupam sa grajatam sahagana ragana tam vitam tam sajivam sadvaitam sarvadutam parijana sahita krishna chaitanya deva shi radha krishna padam sahagana lalita shi vishakam vitam scha hey krishna karuna sindhu Dina Bandu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta and the most to take Tapta Kancha Nagodangi Radhe Brindhavaneswari Vishabhanu Suti Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vancha Kopa Tarubas Chakriba Sindhu Bhai Bacha Patita Nam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namaho Namaha Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhupada Sri Dvaita Gadadhar Sivasari Gaura Bhakti Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare Hare So the meeting of Nanda Maharaj and Vasudev It's a very loving and very intimate exchange between these two personalities. Both are fathers of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. <coughs> and it's explained here that Vasudev, after hearing from Nanda Maharaj, who was really overwhelmed with sorrow, having heard that Vasudev's children were mercilessly killed by this King Kamsa. He wanted to somehow show his concern, his compassion, his feelings of empathy for, as a father, he also knows what it's like for a personality to have their children born and then immediately destroyed by some evil personality with for no reason at all. Apparent no reason. But Vasudev, he's happy to understand one thing, that as Nanda Maharaj speaks, he said, but your, your daughter, that little daughter, she was spared. And somehow she made it to the heavenly planets. She was freed from the wrath of Kamsa. She was saved. Now, Nanda Maharaj doesn't know that that daughter was born of Yasoda. It's actually his daughter. In the sense that when Krishna appeared, Mother Yasoda was actually so much in child labor that 
that immediately upon the birth of Krishna and the young girl, is, uh, the daughter, the younger sister of Krishna, both were born almost simultaneously. Krishna was born first and then the daughter. Of course, sometimes we say it is the external energy of the Lord. But you, you saw there was so much in, I mean, she went to sleep. She actually fell asleep. So she actually didn't know she had twins. Her two children are actually born. So it was a, the arrangement of the Lord in such a way that the Lord, as he appeared simultaneously in another place, the Lord appeared in two places simultaneously. And that's where he's also Vasudev, the son of Vasudev. And he's also Yasoda Nandana, the wonderful son of Yasoda. He's both. He appeared in his Vrindavan feature as the son of Vasudev and Yasoda. And in his Vaikuntha apparel, his Vaikuntha mood with four arms, as the son of Devaki and Vasudev. Now, Nanda Maharaj is, we might say, very fortunate in the sense that he got the opportunity to have the wonderful Supreme Personality of Godhead as his child. He had the opportunity to express loving exchange as a father to a son to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Here, Vasudev, he's happy. He's happy because of that. This is the quality of Vasudev cannot be really explained. His, what we say, self-sacrifice, that was later brought out when Krishna met both Devaki and Vasudev at Kurukshetra. And how they had to undergo so much austerities, difficulties, having been put in jail, having to w practically watch their children being slaughtered by this heinous demon one after another. And then, although Krishna was spared by the arrangement of the higher powers, by the Lord's arrangement himself, he never got the opportunity to have Krishna as his child. To, to express his loving paternal mood for the Supreme Lord. But although he didn't have that, he was happy that Nanda Maharaj had that facility. Think about this. This is interesting. This is a, a, a very, very exalted quality. A quality that's not only exalted, but extremely, extremely rare. That thinking simply of the happiness of someone else, even at the expense of your own unhappiness. In one sense, he was, we might say, we could actually say that he, he didn't get that opportunity. And therefore, there's something missing in fatherhood. When you have a child and still you can't express that love, it seems like life is not even worth living. But Vasudev wasn't like that. He was so happy that Nanda Maharaj had gotten Krishna, and Krishna was somewhat safe in Vrindavan. And so his happiness was the happiness of Nanda Maharaj, the happiness of Mother Yasoda, the happiness of Krishna, at the expense of his own sacrifice. This is a very rare quality we find that in only in very exalted personalities. We also feel happy when others are happy, but we also seek our own happiness also, in an, even in the spiritual aspect. But when we have to give up our own happiness in order to, for, for someone else to benefit, that is a real quality. Srimati Radharani is the personification of that quality as she wants to be with Krishna. But sometimes Krishna wants to be with another gopi. And because she wants Krishna's pleasure over her pleasure, this is love. 
Love is a very difficult thing to understand and very rare to, to witness. Love actually means only for the beloved. That's the ultimate principle. In this material world, we, find, we don't find that. People have relationships, but there must be mutual reciprocation in that relationship. Otherwise, it becomes difficult, and sometimes, many times, it falls apart. <laughs> and that's not love. That's why the scriptures say, in the material world, there is no love. <laughs> it's simply lust. Lust simply means for me. Love means for you. That's the difference. We might use a simple, very succinct expression of that definition. That I do something for your pleasure and not considering my own pleasure in doing that for your pleasure. But in the material world, we don't find that. Therefore, when the scriptures and the acharyas emphatically say there's no love in this world, there can't be because everyone is seeking their own self-interest. And Prabhupada, of course, made some concessionary explanation of the word love in the sense that a mother's love for the child is somewhat selfless. So we find that as the, as the epitome or the height of love in this world. When someone simply sacrifices their own time, energy, comfort, sleep, whatever else it takes to care for someone, to give another person protection for happiness. So Radharani, when she not only sacrifices her desire to be with Krishna, so because to please Krishna because he wants to be with another girl, another gopi, she also goes to that gopi and teaches that gopi what Krishna is pleased with. In other words, how to serve Krishna nicely. She's expert at that. There's no one more expert than Srimati Radharani than pleasing Krishna. And she is the epitome of Madhurya Ras. Ras means this, the intricate aspects of loving relationship that make the love even takes it to a higher and higher level of experiencing of pleasure in variety. And she knows that art well. She, she's perfected that art. She is the epitome of that art. Her existence is that art itself. And then she teaches others how to do that because her only concern is Krishna's happiness. Here, we find that quality in, in Svasudev also. He's, he had to undergo so much difficulty. And after all of that, you know, he never got the chance for parenthood. So a Vaishnav, a devotee, is one is paradukha dukhi, one who is cons wants to s make the unhappy happy. In other words, to somehow or other be an instrument for Krishna's mercy to bring others to Krishna consciousness. When we say Krishna consciousness, we're talking about the perfection of happiness. We use the word Krishna consciousness as the complete terminology which covers everything auspicious. Everything that is auspicious fits into that category, Krishna consciousness. Whatever you're desiring in life that is worthy of achievement, it fits into that category of Krishna consciousness. Whether it's happiness, wealth, satisfaction, peace of mind, knowledge, whatever it is, fits into the category of Krishna consciousness. So, Vasudev, just what, what he had to go through, just experiencing all that suffering that his wife was going through, with one child after another being mercilessly killed. And Prabhupada writes in one purport in the fourth canto, I'm sorry, sixth canto, about the word is, I don't like, can't remember the word, but the word is hatya. Hatya means to kill, to kill children. Prabhupada says, nowadays it's quite common. In, de in days of yore, it was not so common, but still it went on. But those who did it were like the quality of Kamsa, who were vicious, cruel, mean, and completely self-interested. 
in terms of them, their mind and senses. But nowadays, you know, people don't even think twice to allow an innocent child not to give a chance to live. It becomes an, an infringement on my happiness if I have to raise a child. Therefore, it might be easier, they rationalize, it might be easier for both me and the child for the child not to live. Why bring up the child when I can't do it anyway? So the child be miserable, so let's, instead of we both be miserable, at least I'll be happy. At least that's what they think, anyway. So nowadays it's quite common. And it goes on today as freedom of one's own right to use their body in whatever way they want. Which is another way of saying, um, I don't care about you, I only care about me. <laughs> That's another way of saying, use nice political slogans to define another way of saying, I want to be sinful, but I can use nice words to say it. <laughs> so this is today's world. So it was rare that children were being killed in those days, but still it went on. And Vasudev had to somehow, along with his good wife Devaki, had to experience that six times. The seventh child was Balaram. He was in the room of Devaki and later he was transferred by Yoga Maya under Krishna's direction to the room of Rohini. Also Vasudeva is also inquiring, I think it's in a previous verse, how is, how is Balaram also, the son of Rohini? Is he doing well? That's his child also. So not only was Krishna in his form as Vaikuntha Krishna and Balaram, both the child of Vasudev, never got the opportunity to experience parentalhood. And you know, later on when Krishna met them on the battlefield of Kurukshetra, Krishna was practically in tears, just wanting to show his affection for Devaki and Vasudev, how much they suffered so he could somehow or other grow up nicely in, in Vrindavan. Krishna's love for his parents was shown in a beautiful way. And he said so many wonderful things just to pacify their heart. But he knew, he knew he couldn't completely pacify it. But still, he gave his love to his parents. But Vasudev never considered I'm at a loss. Nanda Maharaj, Yasoda, they're happy. They have Chi Krishna with them. And Krishna's growing up nicely in Vrindavan. And Vasudeva also knows that what's going on with Kamsa. Now that Kamsa failed to destroy this, the eighth child of Devaki, Kamsa's sending all these demons into Vrindavan. Yesterday we heard a very I think adventurous class. <laughs> it was one of the most exciting classes I ever heard. It was like, you know, you can shut off your television. This was really, <laughs> this was really an amazing class just to hear how, you know, it was, it was like you could actually visualize Kamsa going around and fighting with all these demons. We could, that, that, that class should be compiled into a little, what they call a transcript, made in book. <laughs> that, was, that was an amazing class. I was really enjoying it. <laughs> and uh, now Kamsa had conquered all these demons, and therefore they were obliged to serve Kamsa. So in their obligation, they did whatever Kamsa wanted, and he sent one after another in Vrindavan. And Vasudev knows this. Therefore, also, as long as he, he wants to be with Nanda Maharaj, but he says, Nanda Maharaj, you better go back. There's a lot of calamities in Vrindavan. And when he first goes back, what does he see? The dead body of Putana laying on in the road. <laughs> Something like how many miles? Ten miles? Huge body of this demon Putana. That's the first thing he sees when he returns to Vrindavan. That will be coming up in the later verses in this chapter. 
But Vasudeva is concerned that Nanda Maharaj go back there and take care of Krishna and make sure he's safe. Of course, this is, this is the sweetness of parental affection. Parental affection is such a, is such a thing, thing that one is in a superior position and one is thinking, by my love, care, and arrangements, Krishna is being protected. But it's the opposite. <laughs> Krishna is protecting everyone. But this is the love of the devotees. The devotees can actually experience the, the, uh, the opportunity to give Krishna protection. And that's deity worship. The deity actually comes in that mood as being subordinate to the devotees. So we wake up the deities, we dress the deities, we bathe the deities, we feed the deities, we sing beautiful songs to them to make them happy, glorify their qualities and activities, we put them to rest, we decorate everything nicely for them, just for their pleasure. And that is like the mood of parental affection, being in the mood of taking care of Krishna. <laughs> But in the back of our minds, or at least when we think about it, it's Krishna taking care of us <laughs> by giving us a chance to serve him in that mood. So that's, that's Krishna. So although Nanda Maharaj and Vasudev, Vasudev knows that nothing can happen to Krishna. He knows it. He knows Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. There's no way that any power on earth or even be beyond earth can destroy the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Still, his parental love overshadows that mood. And he's thinking, Krishna needs your protection. Go back. He may be in danger. Interesting. And this is the love. It's like Nanda Maharaj one time. <coughs> No, I'm sorry, this was, not Nanda Maharaj, this was uh, Jagannath Mishra, who actually was Nanda Maharaj come again in Lord Chaitanya's pastimes, when he was chastising little Nimai for all his mischief. Nimai was very mischievous. Krishna was mischief, was mischievous, but Nimai made him look like a nice child. <laughs> Nima, Nimai was very mischievous. Very mischievous. And so his father, Vasu, uh, I'm sorry, Jagannath Mishra had to correct him and somehow chastise him. So one time he went to sleep and in the dream, a very effulgent personality appeared to him and said, you know, your son is, you shouldn't chastise him. He's actually a great sort of personality. He's actually Narayan himself. <laughs> And so Vasudev said, in the dream, he was talking, he was responding to this personality who appeared to him in a dream, and he said, I don't care, even if he is Narayan, he's still, he's my son. I'm going to do what a father does, naturally, out of love and out of care. So that's the love of parental affection. It overshadows the fact that, you know, although... And Krishna likes that. Krishna likes that. Krishna likes to be in a position of being subordinate to his devotees. But the devotees don't like to be in a position of being superior to Krishna. But in the Vrindavan mood, that's covered by the, the, the potency of Sri Yogamaya, who makes that loving mood so sweet that the devotee and Krishna appear to be forgetfulness of each of their positions. And Krishna it becomes subordinate, the devotee becomes superior in taking care of Krishna. But the main point here, and it's a very powerful point, is that Vasudev wanted only the happiness of Krishna and Nanda Maharaj. <clears throat> so the devotee, when he preaches, or when she preaches, sometimes it's difficult. Not sometimes. In Kali Yuga, preaching is very difficult <clears throat> because people are so covered by the lower modes of passion and ignorance. 
to cut through that, to somehow or other track people's minds, to wake up to their situation of suffering and come to Krishna consciousness. As Prabhupada says, and as the Acharyas also say, it takes 300 gallons of blood to simply to make one devotee. <laughs> it's a lot of difficulty to preach. And sometimes when you do make a devotee, after some time, things go and they go away or for some. So in this age, it's very much the energy of the material energy to make things very difficult for preaching. That's just the way it is. It's Kali Yuga. Manda Sumanda Mateo Manya Bhagu Padra Tahar. It's just so difficult. People are so covered over. But yet a devotee doesn't think, oh, I'll preach if everything goes nice. The way he thinks, I, preaching is the order of my spiritual master. Preaching is an opportunity to show compassion to the fallen conditioned souls. Preaching is an opportunity to be an instrument for Krishna's mercy. So let me do it even if it's difficult. <laughs> but the concession is, and Bhakti Vinod Thakur explains, that the difficulties that one encounters in the process of preaching are the happinesses that one experiences in one's devotional service. So happiness comes by taking risks or putting oneself in a situation where one has to sacrifice for others. It's difficult, but Kali Yuga, there's no choice. Kali Yuga is very difficult. And the material energies are very, very strong. <clears throat> People's intelligence are low, bodily strength are low, memory are low, ability to sit down and to meditate is impossible. People can't sit and chant. It's too hard to sit down. It's just because of the age. It's just that the age is so, even from one's early childhood, one is taught sense gratification. And so as one grows up, the more that element enters into one's life, the harder it becomes to practice meditation, sense control, austerity, tapasya, giving up things for higher principles. But still, a devotee doesn't. So Vasudev never considered the difficulties. He did what he had to do because he knew this was the order of the Lord and he was the Lord's pure devotee. And it says in the very last sentence, and this is nice, it says when Vasudev learned that everything that he had done was not disclosed by Nanda Maharaj. The fact that he didn't know that that daughter was his daughter, thinking it was Vasudev's daughter, and that everything was nice in Vrindavan, the child was there, Nanda Maharaj, be Vasudev became happy. He became happy when he knew Nanda didn't know anything. Because he simply wanted Nanda's happiness, that's all. And Krishna's happiness, like that. Okay, so we have to end soon. Any questions, comments? No questions. Question? How to develop a quality of paradukha dukkha? That was the question. Hmm. We might say that the most direct and most effective way is to associate with those who have that quality. Association is powerful. Sometimes we say, not sometimes, it is said, tell me who you associate 
with and I'll tell you who you are. <laughs> so you're known by your association and you're affected by your association and you're inspired by your association. So if we want to get inspired to develop qualities, then, let, then try to see where those qualities are and try to associate in that way. At the same time, we can cultivate the quality in our own day-to-day -day practice. When the thing about Krishna consciousness, and this is, this is the miracle of this, this process, when you pray for something sincerely, you can guarantee it'll happen. Maybe not right away, but you'll get it. <laughs> you'll get it. Just like if you say, my dear Lord, please take all my material attachments away, it will happen. And don't pray like that unless you're ready. <laughs> but you can pray anyway, because material attachments are simply blockages in transcendental happiness. So therefore, the best thing to do is to associate with devotees who have that quality and try to pray to my dear Lord, my dear spiritual master, please help me develop these qualities. And then you can read about the lives of those who exhibit those qualities also. That inspires us when we hear about and read about those who exhibit these qualities. Association cultivation, <laughs> both. Is that good enough? Okay. okay. Anyone else? Any other questions? Yes, we have a microphone. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. I was wondering, so what, what exactly is the feelings that the gopis and that Nanda Maharaj and Yashoda, what is their feeling towards Krishna in the spiritual world? Because in several, in Srimad Bhagavatam you read that they, they know that he is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, but how does that I'm wondering if you can elaborate on that. And Yoga Maya is there. Yoga Maya is that personality, but it's also an energy that overshadows the awareness that Krishna is God. <laughs> when Mother Yasoda looked into the mouth of Krishna after Balar Balaram complained that Krishna had ate dirt. She was concerned that he was going to get sick from eating dirt. So she looked into his mouth to see where the dirt was. And then when she did, Krishna did something. He allowed her to see the whole cosmic creation inside of his mouth. And at the same time, her looking into the mouth within the cosmic creation. He, in other words, he removed her parental affection, her parental mood, and let her see him as the Supreme Lord. But then, when Krishna saw that she was becoming a little bit, in, uh, she was becoming affected by the mood of awe and reverence, it wasn't pleasing to Krishna. So he again, allowed that covering back. So, love is a mood. One forgets in the mood of love. But that love is an energy that is controlled by Yoga Maya. She's a personality. And she knows how to conduct Krishna's pleasure by allowing that mood to develop. <laughs> so in Vrindavan, in the spiritual world, sometimes they get aware, oh, Krishna is God, but then they just completely dismiss the thought because it, it overshadows the, their love. Their love is more powerful than Krishna being, you know, God. It was just like when uh, Krishna left the Rasa dance. 
And then because of Radharani had left and Krishna went after Radharani, then all the gopis were without Krishna. So they went after Krishna. So Krishna disguised himself in his form, form as Narayan. And he was on the path there. When the gopis came, they immediately saw Narayan and they paid their respects. And then the first thing they said to Narayan is, where did, did you see Krishna? <laughs> they weren't so interested in Narayan. <laughs> They wanted Krishna, because that's their loving mood. And so, get the point? <laughs> yeah. So, but when Radharani came and Krishna, Krishna was 